So here, this uh, illustration is uh, representative of Jesus Christ coming back at the second coming on a white horse, and he wages war on the inhabitants or the armies, if you like, at Armageddon um, um, to to wage war on them. So we'll see what how how that takes place tonight. Okay, that's the purpose of purpose of this study yes to give people an idea of what's what lays ahead so today's message looks briefly at the events that occur during the tribulation that then trigger and the first one is the armageddon war against jerusalem by the armies of gog we'll find out a bit more about them shortly and there's the second coming of Christ to the earth to rescue the Jews from the Antichrist. And then how Christ destroys Antichrist's armies. That's really what we're going to look at tonight. So the summary, there's a summary of events that occur during the tribulation period. Now this is what follows, or this is this is what happens. So throughout the entire seven-year tribulation period, God will be using this period to reach out to the Jewish population in Israel for them to accept his son Jesus Christ as their Messiah through the gospel message preaching um, of the 144,000 young Jewish men. Uh, in that's through the first half of the tribulation. Then there's the two witnesses during the second half of the tribulation, and throughout all this time, an angel flies in the in the throughout the sky, uh, meaning throughout the earth, preaching the everlasting gospel. So that's there's three different um, in, you know people, if you like, involved in preaching the gospel through that time. Now God. Now, what I've said is that God has no further interest in the church as we know it because he now has those who are his from the rapture in heaven with him. Um, I've quoted there 2 Chronicles 7.14. That, um, that's the one that says, um, uh, if my people who are called by my name, you know that one? Yeah. Um, yes. So yeah. this, is, this is the one that, um, it, it means those who are his, okay? Uh, his focus yes. is now on the redemption of Israel and its people. Now, in the first half of the tribulation period, God will use the 144,000 Jewish men who are referred to in the Bible as the man-child in which to evangelize the Jewish nation uh, to bring them to Jesus Christ before they are raptured to heaven at the middle of the period. So uh, looking at Revelation 12, verse 5, it said, And she, meaning Israel, brought forth a man-child. So we've got to remember that this Israel and she is a symbol. It's not a woman. It's a symbol. So yeah. it means Israel. And man-child yes. also is a symbol. It's not an individual who was, and what I've said, he was ordained to rule the nations with a rod of iron. And I've said here this is during the millennium. And her child was caught up, meaning raptured, unto God and to his throne. And then my second reference here is Revelation 14, 1 to 5. And it says, And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him a hundred and forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. And no man could learn that song that they sang, but the hundred and forty and four thousand, which were redeemed from the earth. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. And, we've, you know, if we believe this is true, then these men are alive on the earth today in Israel and they have never married nor have they ever had any sexual relationship with a woman. It says that these are the first fruits unto God 
and to the Lamb, meaning from the nation of Israel and Judah, and in their mouth was found no guile, meaning they only speak truth and love and everything else, for they are without fault before the throne of God. Now, it says here, and I've cut these uh, three, four verses down to just a, a couple of lines. It says, of the tribe of Judah, of the tribe of Reuben, of the tribe of Gad and Asher, Nep Nephilim, Manasseh, Manasseh, it is, Simeon, Levi, Issachar, Zebulon, Joseph, Benjamin, so these are all the 12 tribes of Israel, were each sealed 12,000. That's 12,000 of these virgin men out of each of these 12 tribes. Okay? Now, an angel flies throughout the skies of the earth, possibly throughout the entire tribulation period, preaching the everlasting gospel to the inhabitants of the earth, as stated below. And it says in Revelation 14, 6 and 7, And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation. So if this angel flies around the earth uh, to every nation, every kindred, tongue and people. So that is every type of people from every level of society. Um, and it's say, and this angel is saying with a loud voice, so everybody's going to hear this angel, fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of water. Okay, so that's what the, that's what the angel says in the midst of heaven to all people of the earth over the seven-year period. Now, after the rapture of the man-child, the two witnesses from heaven appear in Jerusalem, these being Enoch, mentioned in Genesis 5, and Elijah, mentioned in 2 Kings 2, who replaced the man-child as evangelists in Israel before being persecuted and dying for their faith. And now you, you can look these things up for yourself. But in Revelation 11, it says, And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand, two hundred and threescore days, meaning 1260 days, clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks that stand before the God of the earth. Okay, so both of these men, Enoch and Elijah, have never died, and God is sending them back as his two witnesses to witness the, the um, gospel of Jesus Christ during the last three and a half years, and ultimately they're killed, and then they get resurrected, and then they ascend into heaven just as Jesus Christ ascended into heaven in a cloud. Right. So, praise the Lord, yes. So during the first half of the tribulation, there will be peace throughout Israel while persecutions of the Christians left behind after the rapture and of the Jews throughout countries outside of Israel will be rampant. There will be numerous wars in various countries where the forces of the Antichrist will try to overtake leaders of countries who resist his call to submit to his authority. In this, the Antichrist will conquer many countries and kill many people using a variety of mean in, means in which to do this, including the remaining three horsemen. Well, in fact, I think it's probably only the two horsemen of the apocalypse. It's, 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 it's unknown, really, but I'm saying that it's Antichrist. So, first of all, is the first... The, Apart from the white horse rider, there's um, death. And this is the second horse. And, and it says another horse that was red, meaning sim the red symbolizes blood. And says, and power, meaning authority from heaven, was given unto him, that's the rider, 
and I'm saying that the rider is Antichrist, he just changes horses, and that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword, and I'm saying from heaven, to make this happen. So this is a seal that is opened in heaven by Jesus Christ, on the scroll or you know on the scroll if you like where the seals are and this is the second yeah. one that's open and so that means that the rider is given authority from heaven uh, to take peace from the earth and people should kill one another and this means that um, it's going to be a terrible time there's going to be a lot of civil war on the earth when this happens so so the second, the well, this is the third horse that rides is represents food deprivation, and the black horse, and he, and I'm saying he, Antichrist, because he's going to cause these problems. That sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand, and I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts saying, a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou heard not the oil and the wine. So this means that there's going to be food shortages, and the price of food is going to go up exorbitantly because of the balances held in the hand of the Antichrist. <clears throat> the last of the four horsemen here is of term starvation and war. So this is... Um, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death, and Hell followed him. So it's probably not the Antichrist, but nevertheless, we don't know exactly who it is. And power, meaning authority from heaven, was given unto them. Uh, that's Hell and Death. So power from heaven was given over them over the quarter of the earth to kill the sword and with hunger, and with death, and with the beasts of the earth. So this is going to be another terrible time when the fourth seal is opened by Jesus Christ in heaven, okay? All of these come about Jesus Christ opening these seals in heaven. Throughout the entire tribulation period, God's seal, trumpet, and vial, or it's also mentioned as bowl judgments, will also kill many people. So we have all of these uh, uh, judgments from God. There's 21 of them there, of which the other, the ones we just looked at are the first four. Um, these judgments were explained in some detail in the previous study, which was Daniel 70 works prophecy in the rapture. So yes. after. After the rapture of the man-child, the Antichrist breaks his peace covenant with the nation of Israel in the middle of the week. And in Daniel 9, verse 27, it says, And he, meaning the Antichrist, shall confirm the covenant, and I'm saying it's of seven years of peace, with many. Now, it starts off with Israel, but it's on behalf of all the Arab nations surrounding Israel for one week. And in the midst or the middle of that week, he shall cause the Jewish sacrifice and the oblation to cease by breaking the covenant. So what we've got to remember is that if you do any research on the Internet regarding the third temple in Israel, you'll find that the, there's very advanced plans in Israel for the Jews to rebuild the temple. And they uh, yeah. quite often put, put a foundation rock on a truck and they drive that truck around the, um, you know, the tent, uh, where the, the Islamic mosque is. And um, anyway, so the, the plans are very advanced. So what it means is that once the peace covenant signed, um, the Jews will be able to build their third temple and they'll be able to uh, recommence animal sacrifices up there for three and a half years or thereabouts. So once they uh, uh, get to the three and a half year period, 
that's when Antichrist will cause the Jewish sacrifice and the oblation to cease. Okay? In this verse, Antichrist sets out to kill as many Jews as he can in Israel. Many of these will flee into the wilderness, as stated below. And she, meaning the nation of Israel, uh, brought forth a man-child comprising 144,000 Jewish men who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron and her man-child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And the woman, meaning Israel, fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God. Now, it's believed to be the city of Petra that they, meaning in the city, should feed her, meaning these escapees from Israel, there 1,260 days or three and a half years, okay? Um, we, did read, we did read the first half of that a lot earlier, but yeah. this was, it's in context here with the second half, okay? So I've tried to find uh, some images related to this. Whoops. And um, as you can see on this uh, map here, we have Jerusalem in the centre of Israel as we know it today. There's Tel Aviv on the coast, Gaza City down here. Now we have Petra down here in Jordan. And Petra mm. is this city that's carved out in a rock. It's been there for a very long time. I can't tell you how long, but it's probably two to 3,000 years. Mm. And it's believed that um, the Jews escape Israel. It's not just necessarily from Jerusalem, but from around. And it says that they, they uh, are placed on the wings of an eagle in the scriptures. And so they, they escape. Antichrist's father, this is alias Satan. We talked about um, Antichrist's father being Satan last, uh, <laughs> last week. Then chases the woman Israel into the wilderness but is unsuccessful as she is protected by God. Now, in, okay. um, in, in Matthew 24, Jesus is saying, When ye therefore, and he's talking to the Jews in Israel, when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Right Now, he's referring to the third temple that's still yet to be built in Israel. Whoso readeth, meaning in Israel, let him understand. Then let them, meaning the Jews in Israel, which be in Judea, flee into the mountains. That's, that's his warning. He's saying, when you see this abomination of desolation, so that's right in the middle of the three and a half years of the tribulation, flee into the mountains. And in uh, Revelation 12, it says, and to the woman, again meaning Israel, were given two wings of a great eagle. Well, I've said here a fleet of planes, it could be a plane. We don't know how many people are there. But that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time or three and a half years, see below, from the face of the serpent, meaning Satan. Satan's always referred to as a serpent. Mm. The serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood, and I'm saying this water is probably representative of soldiers mm. that went after the woman, that he, meaning Satan, might cause her to be carried away of the flood, meaning, you know, taken captive. And the earth, uh, we can probably look at that literally, being arranged by God, helped the woman to escape. And it says the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood. And I'm saying that it's flood of soldiers, which the dragon, meaning Satan, cast out of his mouth. So that's the way I see this prophetic uh, set of scriptures. 
And I just wanted to clarify where it's got a time, times, and half a time up here. The times means two years. A time means one year. And the dividing of time means half a year. So you add them up and you get three and a half years, which is the same as 1,260 days or 42 months. Okay. Now, it says here, um, a remnant of the Jewish nation remains in Israel and Jerusalem for the remaining three and a half years. Now, in Revelation 12, 17, it says, and the dragon, meaning Satan, was wroth with the woman, meaning Israel in the wilderness. And he went to make war with the remnant of her seed, meaning those remaining in Israel, and these are the Jewish believers in Jesus Christ, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So that's what the dragon was aiming to do. But after breaking the peace covenant, Antichrist removes all the Jewish ritual instruments needed for animal sacrifices in the, the Jews' rebuilt or built third temple and replaces them with the abomination of desolation, which I term were probably or will probably be satanic emblems. And it says here in Daniel 7.25, and he, meaning the Antichrist, shall speak great words against the Most High God, meaning God the Father, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think and those would no doubt be Jewish saints, right? And think to change times and laws. And they, meaning the Jews living in Israel and Jerusalem at that time, shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time, or three and a half years. So this is what God's got happening in here. He's got... Uh, Jewish converts to Jesus Christ. Um, they're they're the, the witness of uh, Jesus Christ to everyone in Jerusalem and in Israel. And they are the opposition to the Antichrist during this last three and a half years in Jerusalem. And then it says in Daniel, Daniel 12, and from the time that the daily sacrifice of the Jewish priests to God that's my understanding, shall be taken away and the abomination that maketh desolate is set up, there shall be a 1,290 days. That's what it says there. And I'm saying for the Armageddon war to commence, blessed is he, meaning the Jew in Jerusalem, that waiteth and cometh to the 1,300 and uh, and 35 days. So that is what I understand to be Christ's second coming. So that's three, 1,335 days from the middle of the tribulation period. That's about two years and eight months. Okay. So during this last half of the tribulation period, there will be many wars, famines and pestilences coming from God as judgments which will cause many people throughout the world to die. During this period, God's two witnesses will appear in Jerusalem to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and to kill anyone who dares to kill them. Fire is able to come out of their mouths. So this is all supernatural, but this is what God has written, and so it will happen. So it says... And the holy city, meaning Jerusalem, shall they, meaning the people of the Antichrist, tread underfoot the city 40 and two months or three and a half years. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and sixty days clothed in sackcloth. These two men named Enoch and Elijah are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. So that's in Revelation 11. And it says here in the next verse, and if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth 
and devoureth their enemies, and if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner, meaning by the fire out of their mouths, be killed. And so I found this image on the internet. Um, I think it's a great image in that sense to portray how these men may destroy their enemies by fire, but uh, that's how it's, it's uh, prophesied to happen. So the, these two witnesses similarly preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to the Jewish nation for the remaining 1260 days, just as the 144,000 Jewish man-child did in the previous 1260 days. At the end of this period, meaning the end of the tribulation, the two witnesses are killed by Antichrist people and their bodies lie in the street of Jerusalem for three and a half days, 72 hours, prior to being resurrected into glorified bodies and then ascending into heaven. Now, I found this image on the internet too. Uh, it's quoting um, Revelation 11 in the New Living uh, Testament. And it says, And their bodies will lie in the main street of Jerusalem, the city that is figuratively called Sodom and Egypt, the city where their Lord was crucified. And for three, uh, three and a half days, all peoples, tribes, languages and nations will stare at their bodies, no one will be allowed to bury them. So this is what's going to happen. And if you remember when Lazarus died, he was in, in the grave four days and they knew that he would stink and that meant that he was dead. Um, this is a similar arrangement here. So we move on to the next verses here where it says, and after three days and a half had passed from their death, the spirit of life from God, meaning the Holy Spirit, entered into them. And they stood upon their feet in their glorified, resurrected bodies, and Hallelujah. great fear fell upon them which saw them. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying, Come, uh, come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. So this is a reference to... Uh, that, that's just an image of them ascending into a cloud into heaven. So at, at this point, the nation of Israel in Jerusalem and in the wilderness mostly becomes converted to Jesus Christ as being their prophesied Messiah. Whatever the, whatever the Antichrist tries to do to kill these Jews his efforts fail. That's, okay, that's no. what, I, what I believe, okay? Now, the Antichrist then arranges the nations of the earth to gather in the valley of Megiddo for the battle of Armageddon against the Jews in Israel. The period between the resurrection of the two witnesses above and the battle of Armageddon takes 30 days for the nations to mobilise their armies and to assemble in the Valley of Megiddo. So that is the 1290 days that we read about in Daniel 12 before, minus the 1260 days of the last half of the um, tribulation period, and that equals a 30-day period to assemble their armies. So here on the chart, this area here that's in orange represents that 30-day period um, referred to, okay? So these, these men die here, the two witnesses. They die on this day, 1260 days from when they first appeared. And then 30 days later, we have the Battle of Armageddon starting, okay? Praise the Lord. Wonderful. So it is likely that either during World War III or through an act of God, that all electronic instruments, sorry, mm -hmm. that all electronic devices throughout the world will have been rendered useless by a huge electromagnetic pulse from multiple atomic bombs being set off in the upper atmosphere. 
Such explosions will render modern weapons of war, such as tanks and missiles, useless. Therefore, this war, it's termed the Ezekiel 38-39 war, or the war of Gog from Magog, um, will possibly be fought with ancient weapons, such as helmets, shields and swords, where some uh, of the army will use horses, as stated in the scriptures that follow. Now, this is a, um, a, an illustration that I found on the internet, and I've termed it the simulation of an EMP explosion over a city. So the idea of the explosion is not necessarily to destroy the city and all of the infrastructure in the city, its aim is to produce a electromagnetic pulse which destroys all the electronics and the electrical circuits of everything. And basically there's no electricity. Um, even if electricity starts to be generated, all the uh, computer circuits will have blown in every device and nothing will work, okay? So it plunge the city back uh, thousands of years, well, hundreds of years anyway. Uh, there won't be any motors running to pump water. There won't be anything of any type. So it's really going to be a disastrous time. Well, we have to work out why there are horses and um, shields and swords and helmets being mentioned in the book of Revelation. And, you know, we all know that Modern warfare is highly advanced with missiles and computer systems, lasers, um, yes. all sorts of things. We've got to work out why these things are not mentioned in the scriptures as being used at the War, war of Armageddon. So if we move on here, um, I've got an example of what armies fighting at Armageddon will be like. Mm. So if we look at Ezekiel 38, uh, verses 2 to 5, it says, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, and prophesy against him and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, and I will turn thee back and put hooks in thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth and all thine army. Now it mentions what's in the army. It says there are horses and there are horsemen and all of them clothed with all sorts of armour, even a great army with bucklers. Now if you're going to put on this sort of armour, you need somebody to help put it on you and do it up. So you're going to need a buckler. This is what they had in the days of David. And you've got to have shield. So there's his shield and all of them handling swords. So we've got a man with a sword here. Then it, it num, names Persia. So that's Iran and Ethiopia. You know where that is in Africa. And Libya yeah. is also in Africa. And all of them with the shield and the helmet. Right? So it's got to be a man something looking, looking something like this. And you would yep. think, wow, with all these modern war weapons, why have we come back to what this is? Okay, so once the battle commences, it lasts up to almost 45 days where the city of Jerusalem eventually falls to Antichrist's forces and they enter and pillage it. Mm. Now, now, in Zechariah chapter 14, in the first three verses, it says, behold, the day of the Lord cometh. So well, this is the end of the 45-day period, okay? And thy spoil of the Jews in Jerusalem shall be divided in the midst of thee, meaning the armies of the Antichrist or Gog, right? And then right. it says, for, for I, God in heaven, will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken by the Antichrist. And then it says, and the houses, meaning in Jerusalem, shall be rifled. That means they'll be pillaged. Everything will be looted. They could be burned. And the Jewish women ravished. And that has to mean that they're raped. And half of the city shall go forth into captivity. 
and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. And I've understood that to mean that they will still remain inside. And when this happens, when, you know, part of Jerusalem and the, and the Jews are ravished and, uh, you know, their houses are rifled and, and some of them die, uh, and yet others still remain inside, then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. Okay? So... It, here is a picture of, well, it's a painting, of, I presume, of uh, Jesus Christ on his white horse. He's coming from heaven. And it says, And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. So um, I also have another image here. Um, I like both of those images. Um, this one here is of Jesus again. Uh, he's coming from heaven, yes. And these people here would be the Gentiles who have trodden uh, the uh, city of uh, Jerusalem underfoot 42 months. Um, and he's coming down at the end of uh, the Armageddon battle uh, to destroy them all. And we're going to see in a moment how he destroys all of these people, okay? As you'll see here, there are rifles here, and there yeah. are, and even though they're helmets, these helmets are fairly modern sort of helmets. So, um, oh, who knows? The helmet's a helmet. Uh, we'll just have to <laughs> yeah. wait, wait and see, you know. Well, I, won't, I don't want to be here when that happens. It's going to be a terrible time. Yeah. Now... When Jesus is revealed from heaven on his white horse 45 days after the battle of Armageddon had commenced, Christ supernaturally destroys Israel's enemies together with their animals. Now, this is written in Zechariah 14, and this is what it says. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Uh, their flesh shall consume away while they stand on their feet. Their eyes shall consume away in their eye sockets and their tongue shall consume away out of their mouth. And, they sh and I've missed a, uh, a few words out here. And they shall lay hold every one on his hand of his neighbour. So these people are going to be blind and I don't know how they're going to do anything, but it says he's hand shall rise up against the hand of his neighbour and Judah also shall fight at Jerusalem. So the Jews, meaning Judah, um, they, they'll they be fully armed and they'll be fully fit and they will be able to overtake these people in Jerusalem and the wealth of all the heathen round about shall be gathered together, gold and silver and apparel in great abundance and so shall be the plague of the horse. So here we hear, we're seeing the animals that the uh, Gog's army bring to Jerusalem. So we've got the horse, we've got the mule, we've got the camel, and we've got the ass, and all the beasts that shall be in these tents as this plague. So that's a very interesting picture of the um, armies of Gog or the Antichrist at Jerusalem. Now, the blood of those slain at Armageddon from Christ's actions fill the length of this valley to the depth of the horse's bridle from all of those slain. So if we look at all of those slain, it's not only the men, but it'll be the blood of the horse, the blood of the mule, the blood of the camel, the ass mm -hmm. and all of their beasts. So... Um, so it's going to slay them to a height of about 1.5 metres high and 322 kilometres in length, that's 200 miles from the ground. So we're looking at a valley that's 200 miles long and this is how much blood is going to be in that valley. Now, I can't imagine it, but it, yeah. this is what it says in Isaiah 63. It says... Who is this that cometh, meaning from the direction of Edom, and with dyed garments from Bosra? That means that Jesus Christ, 
This is who it's referring to. He's already been in Edom and he's been at Bosra. This is that glor glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. And then the answer is, I, Jesus Christ, that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. And then, the, then, then the, there's a question from the questioner saying, well, why are, why are you dressed in red in thy apparel? And why are they got the, thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat, meaning the wine press, you know, as they do when they want to press out the grapes and get the wine? Mm, and the yeah. answer that Jesus Christ gives, I have trodden the wine press alone and of the people there was none with me. Now, this is the saints that come with him from heaven at the second coming. They come with him, but Jesus takes the entire earth uh, and the, the responsibility for killing all of these people all on his own. He says that he has trodden the wine press alone and, there, and of the people that came with him, there was none with me, for I will tread them, meaning Antichrist's armies, in mine anger and trample them in my fury and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments and I will stain all my raiment. So this is going to be a very bloody day in which Christ has the blood of many people all over his body. For, for the day of vengeance is in mine heart and the year of my redeemed, meaning the nation of Israel, is come. So this is the great day that Jesus Christ has been waiting for for a long time, to redeem the children of Israel. So then it says here, and the winepress, meaning the death of Antichrist's armies, was trodden without, meaning outside the city of Jerusalem, and blood came out of the wine press, even up to the horses' bridles, by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. And in um, metric and and uh, imperial measurements, that's two hundred miles or three hundred and twenty-two kilometers in length. And that and so, I got this image also off the internet to show you what it sort of looks like. So this is a, a picture, this is a picture of Israel. Um, Elat is in the southernmost tip of um, well, hang on, let's just let's just go up here for a bit. Um, I just can't remember where it is, but we've got a little bit of a map here. There we go. See Elat down here? Yes. And then it goes then it goes up to where um, it goes up to this area here, I think, or up to Nazareth, somewhere up there. Anyway, now we'll just go back here again, so you know where we're, you know where we're looking. And so there's Elat down the south, and Armageddon's up here, and here you've got the Dead Sea here, and so south of the Sea of Galilee. So that is 200 miles long or 322 kilometres and they're saying that whole valley there will be filled to one and a half metres high of blood. That is a huge amount of blood, whether it's from animals or from, or from men. <clears throat> this next uh, image, there's two of them here. Um, I also got this off the internet. Um, because it refers to the Ezekiel 38-39 war of Gog. Um, it says it had come, and he's from the land of Magog. And it just shows some of the countries that are involved in this war. So when Antichrist summons them, you've got Goma and Tubal and Meshach and Togomar. These are all um, ancient names, biblical names. Uh, Persia, as I said, is in Iran and in part of uh, Iraq as well. And then there's Sheba and Dedan. They're, they're further down into Saudi Arabia and Ethiopia. And Put, um, I'm just not sure where Put is, but they all centre around here at Armageddon. 
Okay, that's really what that is illustrating. Um, here, it, I, I thought this was fairly good. This is the height at which the blood will be at in that valley. Okay, now, uh, this here is from Ezekiel 39, and two, two verses, and it says, It shall come to pass in that day that I will give unto Gog, meaning the armies of Antichrist, a place there of graves in Israel, the valley of the passengers on the east of the sea. And, and I've said here, the stink of it, meaning the dead corpses of Antichrist's army, shall stop the noses of the passengers. These are the travellers who pass through that way. And there they shall bury Gog and all his multitude. And they shall call it the Valley of Hamongog. And seven months shall the house of Israel be burying them, that they may cleanse the land. Yea, all of the people of the land shall bury them. So this means all the Jews and everyone passing through, they'll take the shovel and they'll bury these people. And it shall be to them a renown, meaning a permanent remembrance of the day that Jesus Christ will be glorified when he returns at the second coming. So Amen. when he returns at the second coming, that will be a day of remembrance forever. That's what that Amen. means. Amen? Amen. All right. Very good. So I just wanted to put this here because we're near the end now um, because this su summarises everything that we've looked at. We've looked at pretty much the beginning of the tribulation and the events leading up to it, where we are at the moment. Uh, we've looked at the 21 uh, judgments of God upon the inhabitants of the earth during this period. Um, we've certainly looked at the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Uh, we looked at them tonight. There was the mention of the abomination of desolation that appears in the temple and let him that see, sees it flee to the mountains, it says. And um, we've got the two witnesses and um, their testimony. So I haven't shown here the 144,000, but they're in here and the two witnesses. And then they're killed here at the end of the tribulation on the 1260th day, they're killed. And then we've got the 30-day period where all the armies of Gog assemble in Israel. And then there's a battle that wages here for 45 days. And then at the end of that 45-day period, we have Jesus Christ coming back uh, to the earth and he takes over Israel and Jerusalem. And there's a lot of dead bodies and horses and everything um, to be buried. So that's really where we've gotten up to um, over the last two or three weeks, okay?